Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Daymare 1998. Last time we had a little issue with our pistol and the um, clips. It's fixed now, I guess uh, just replaying it, you know, turn off the game, coming back in and solve the issue. So it might be like a little bug or something, I'm assuming. Of course it could be something else, maybe I put these hollow points instead of the regular ammunition and that like made it have a heart attack there's no telling but yeah everything's good i also had to like replay that first little area again because the auto save is when you're coming back so had to kill all those guys again but let us proceed forward here this does not sound good Okay, the sample I have to recover is inside this chamber. So now we gotta figure out how to unlock the virus thing. Which is probably not a good idea. It looks like we might need like a code or a um, key card. Wait, I hear something. Yeah, that's right, I do. Looks like someone that was a test patient, possibly. I know you're not dead. Put, we'll put one more into him just to make sure. Wrong button there. Okay, so we can combine items together. By combining basic ingredients with hexacore additives, the player can create items usable for the quick slot menu. So drink, looks like, I don't know, some weird things, but looks like health, armor, and accuracy. By combining RUF of the same type, a significant, more powerful version of the original will be created. Alternatively, when you combine RUF of different types and item wielding, the base properties from each will be crafted. Oh. Interesting. I don't think we can use it right now. We have an energy. Oh, we can use it on the energy drink. So if we come in here, we go. Well, there's. Okay, they're both health. So we go. Combine. With that, there we go. And if we get another one, we can get the energy bar going, and then we can have uh, two. I had to use one uh, earlier between videos because I uh, walked in the fire in that first area. Exit core biogenetics encrypted file. File code HB194 server. No good information, but we took the whole. Com we took that whole thing. Or oh, was a paper? I'm going crazy here. I thought there was a computer there for a second. Okay, we can go in there, but I kind of want to explore just a little bit in here before we get ourselves into something, some more trouble. That's a Resident Evil thing right there. If I have not seen one before. I said, we've been playing Resident Evil 2, so we know. Okay, what is this? You want pressing the wrong button here. Hacking system. Although some doors are, some doors and lockers are firmly shut with a security system. They might just contain rare and valuable resources. It's possible to crack the system with the hacking DID function. To begin hacking, you need a, an override cable. We got, we're gonna have two. To successfully hack into the system, you must stop both cursors while they're inside the moving segments. Oh, that little black thing over there. Okay. When you stop one in the correct position, a countdown will begin. When the countdown reaches zero, the hack has failed, destroying the cable. Okay, and I guess we can kind of try it there. Let me pick out the other one. I see we'll have at least two of them, so they give you two, two chances to unlock the door. This is already unlocked. Uh... That's a green jellyfish if I've ever seen one. Ooh. So just hit that spray. The space. You dirty little bastard. They always love just chilling right by the doors. You still alive? No. It's your buddy over here. I'll say we'll put him down. I'll say let's give him another one just in case. He might still be alive there. Looks like there is some inf or some things we can pick up. Okay, a magazine for our assault rifle, hopefully. Yep, should be. 
I was about to say, I couldn't reload it. And it's very slow to reload. So we gotta be careful of that. If I go into the tab menu, I can probably refill the other one. I'll say combine that with the assault rifle rounds that we have. You can also combine with the, I guess he's 13. Hopefully you can still switch in between. Archived file that this diary belonged to an Aegis researcher. Some of the data are circled with red ink. 1995. Pollux, we can finally create the perfect soldier. Strong, resilient, and self-repairing. And to think that most of the grunt work was done by none other than Mother Nature herself. For some reason, the local jellyfish, which are already capable of amazing regeneration, inhabited the sunken vessel, whereby they became exposed to the chemical agent. From there, they reproduced generations after generation, growing stronger with each mutation that altered their DNA and birthed a hybrid. We studied these new aquatic life forms outwardly, similar to Hydra. Snedaria, but far more aggressive and much more dangerous. In time, we'll use our study to create a new virus that can turn regular soldiers into genetically advanced war machines. But in the meantime, all we can do is wait for the government to fulfill its promise in order to begin human trials. 1997. If I think back to just a few years, it feels like a century ago. Although Castor is now the pinnacle of modern BC warfare, Pollux is also on track to fruition. The Hydra Cynidaria finally gifted us its firstborn. We've had a major breakthrough, a passing of torch of sorts, even if it would be foolhardy to hide the fact that we need more time. Time is something that army and government officials just won't allow us. They promise Pollux to their allies and Pollux they shall have. The only issue we haven't been able to solve, one that puts the entire program into jeopardy, is this. The perfect soldier we prototype is anything but perfect. We've injected the virus into hundreds of candidates with wide genetic variations, yet we're nowhere near a solution. In fact, in just a few minutes, the virus begins to strengthen its host. Although no visible external changes are apparent, in just two to three hours after infection, Pollux is able to regenerate cells and tissue, progressively increasing the power and resilience of its host. This is truly a remarkable accomplishment that will advance. Medical and military research by decades in just a few short years. If not for the grave side effects that have afflicted almost every subject during exper experimentation, all the physical enhancements afforded by the Pollux virus are subordinate to a single, inescapable necessity, the host assimilation of specific hormones that balance and regulates the body, which are otherwise produced by the hypothalamus. As long as large enough quantities of these hormones are assimilated in concentrated doses due to the demand of accelerated me metabolism in enhanced organisms, the subject's psyche remains lucid and aware, while strength, resilience, and regenerative powers remain under control. However, my god, there's a lot here. When these hormones become absent for prolonged periods, the first sign of mental deterioration appears, causing blackouts and gradually destroying all forms of conscious decision making. After that, in most cases, the body undergoes unpredictable physical changes that lead to its eventual total destruction. What we need to accomplish in the remaining months afforded to the study is to find a solution as the project as a whole is at stake. 1998. Government agents regularly visit the lab and help themselves to experimental data and samples from the most important studies. We've lost a lot of sleep in the past few months, but haven't been able to figure out the hormone dilemma that's been plaguing our research, other than administering a large amount of synthetic hormone to Pollux infectees. The military and strategic purpose of viral weapons is to keep the host in an intermediate state whereby physical abilities are greatly enhanced, yet always under conscious control that responds lucidly to orders. The only way to achieve this is to force subjects to inject themselves with hormones. All of this, of course, is inevitably subject to a series of unknowns that the military doesn't seem to care about. I wonder what would happen if one of these subjects turned against its creator, intentionally or not able to take the synthetic hormones, among other things that are limited on. The battlefield. Unless subjects are damaged beyond re regenerative capabilities, these potentially unstoppable and lethal soldiers could just go on a killing spree with no one to stop them. That is, until the absence of the necessary hormones causes its own self-destruction. And this isn't really a solution as one test showed 
when a subject infected by Pollock somehow gifted with increased intelligence took a researcher captive inside the lab after several hours of negotiation, the subject obviously suffering from mental deterioration, tore open the researcher's head and devoured his hypothalamus and agrostiques, feeding frenzy that afforded the necessary hormones it was lacking. This extended its life by several hours, and it regained some intelligence that was lost during the experiment. As far as I'm concerned, despite however many years I've dedicated to this program, PLX-731 is officially just another failed bioweapon experiment. The reason for its failure lies in the inability to produce, even artificially, the necessary hormones to maintain life and sedate its host. Apparently, however, the higher-ups have their own ideas regarding this. All we can do now is narrow down the search and do what they tell us yet again. My god, so what I've gotten from this is that after World War II, the Japanese were angry and they made this disease that they're like getting all their stuff from. Now they put on a submarine and they wanted to attack, you know, the United States, but unfortunately it did not make it. So later on, I guess US researchers or whatnot found it and was like, hey, what's that? They noticed some jellyfish which were infected with it and they pretty much started making their own super soldiers out of it, or tried to. And they made zombies in the meanwhile. Alright, note to supervisor. Maintenance and renewal of containment rooms. Dear Dr. Everett, by now you're probably sick of my many appeals, but I really must insist that the maintenance system for controlling temperatures in the containment rooms be immediately remedied immediately. The system is supposed to automatically turn on once the air reaches a specific temperature. Instead, I am forced to send one of my people to adjust it at the terminal outside the room, which regulates the level of nitrogen via spectrum every six hours by hand. By hand. Two, avoid further inconveniences and to fill your managerial responsibility to mend this system. Please, please send another technician to fix the damn machine. I sincerely appreciate the assistance, Dr. Jeremy Falk. Alrighty. At least that one wasn't an eight page essay about why we're doing this. Oh, we're guys getting tired here. Probably need like a key for this one. I should grab Polex first. Uh, probably has to do with the chamber's cooling system. Okay. Single one, nit one nitrogen stack has used activate. Start the readjusting process. Sure. I mean, I don't know what's happening here. Okay. Five. Can we take one from there? Take one from there. Oh, because that one's cold enough. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can only have one at a time, pretty much. I'm pretty sure we need to lower that one. Okay, uh, take yours. Uh, no, not good enough. Problem is, is I don't know which tank we're supposed to like keep. Is it chamber one? Or do we need to fill it all the way up with uh, nitrogen? Let's try that out. No, apparently we do need to kind of spread it around. How much do you got? 10? God, that's a lot too. Is this, this chamber one is like super hot? Apparently. Okay, so what's going on here? You'll go to like five, right? Okay, let's actually kind of get out of here for now. Let's see, we probably have to do that. I want to go check out what's in this other room, really. 
Oh, it tells us how much it needs. Okay. So we just have to check these, get the correct temperature that it needs, and it will be good. Before we do that, let's go over here, because this seems to be the place where we need to go. I kind of want to check this out. Okay, so F for that one, and then Q over here. Perfect. It's a little weird, but once we get it, I think we'll be good. I would like some ammo, if that's possible. Okay, thank you for the ammo. And that's exactly what I wanted. That's like the first time that's ever happened. Ooh. Okay, more ammo. Uh, looks like another mental fluid. That's weird. That might in like improve our shooting. That guy's dead. There's a door here. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze, so I just had to make a little cut there. But yeah, I guess that's everything in this room. Just a good amount of ammo. I mean, you can't really complain with that. So let's reload. Let's see if we can, before we do anything, kind of get our ammunition under order here. Yeah, especially you. Combine that with some pistol rounds. That should be good. Let us get out of there. Okay, so four needs to be zero degrees and three needs to be five. Let's see. Four, zero. Okay, let me see here. Run in here. Okay, so where's four? Okay, four is zero. Okay, let me figure out what uh what these ones in here need. So we gotta run all the way over here. What do you need? You're one and you need negative fifteen. So number one needs a lot of uh, cooling. And number one doesn't have it. So four is where it's needed. So we're gonna take yours. We're gonna give it to that one. That's the 15. Let's go back. Okay, this bad boy over here, which is number two, needs 20. And it needs to be hot, 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. Number two, 20 degrees Celsius. So take that one. There we go. Okay, we need to retrieve our viral sample. Apparently we're doing pretty good here. Uh, That's not good though. Looks like there might be someone waiting for us out here. Hello? Oh, there would be a mutated bastard. Oh, thank God you're able to put him down. I must say, give him one more just in case and reload. Yeah, those guys run too, so we gotta be very careful with them. Okay, so there's the virus that we need. Leev to mission control. PLX-731 sample secured. En route to second helipad for extraction. Do you copy? Good job, Agent. But I'm afraid I have some bad news. The objective of this operation has been updated. Agent Krychek and Wes have disappeared. And until they've been found, we can't allow you to leave the building. Your new objective is to complete the mission of the Epsilon team and download all the research data on your DID. Please confirm status update. Over. New objective confirmed. On my way. Over. Son of a bitch. They had one job. I'm just a war dog after all. They had one job and they couldn't even get that done. I guess this is to kind of get rid of any diseases that we might have. Okay, what do we got here? We have a men's and women's restroom, weirdly enough. We can't go in the women's or what? No, apparently not. Oh, I see you, bastard. Let's see, let me just put you down. Is he dead? Oh, you might be. One shot, not bad. 
Oh, but there's someone over there in that room, isn't there? Yeah, that door keeps on opening. I do not like that. Okay, we have an RU. It's locked, so we might need to find a key. Or there might be a key chilling around here. You're definitely dead, though. That skeleton's dead. I mean, when, once the skeletons start getting up, that's when I'm going to be worried. Let's wait here. Can anyone hear me? This is Agent Crane. An unidentified subject. Hostile. Protective hazmat clothing. He just shot at me. I think I heard him. Proceed with extreme caution. He is armed and deep. Crane, can you hear me? Crane! Oh uh, no, we're starting to get intelligent monsters. Apparently if they eat brains, they do get more intelligence, so... If they eat enough people, they might be able to learn how to use guns again. Theoretically. Of course, you never know. And hopefully this is the door that opens. I hate it when you're like in the elevator, just like waiting, and it's the door behind you that opens. <laughs> and you're just like, hmm. I wonder when the elevator's gonna open. In fact, let's just chill it like this. I'll say this facility is pretty deep down. Okay, here we go. Ooh, we got cameras. Looks like maybe a psychologist area. A lot of pains about the brain and whatnot. There's a button here. Let me make sure there's no one chilling right there. All systems active. Uh. Don't know what we're supposed to do here. So apparently we have to give the viral thing to it. All systems down. Shit. I absolutely have to recover those samples somehow. Oh, the remains of Agent West. It looks like some asshole gunned him down. Oh, so there's someone still alive. Sandman, here. do you copy? I found West's body. Looks like he was shot to death. No sign of Crycheck yet. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? God damn this cock sucking storm! Jesus, cock sucking, eh? Can we uh listen to that thing that we got, I wonder? Oh, we might actually have to put those together. Okay, let me see here. Let me see. Inventory weapon, navigate, switch tabs. Here we go. Here we go. There's an audio file that we might want to listen to. Okay, so we got pretty much the, the last uh, thing he had to say. What is that? Mental drops. And G22. How is our inventory though? Is it full? It's definitely full. So what we need to do is we need to combine these bad boys. Okay, so apparently we can't combine those. Let's go back in there. Can we combine the other one, I wonder? Nope. We don't really want to eat it either, so we really need to take some, like, damage. Well, okay, hold on. How is our damage? 71. So you know what? We can eat that energy bar. We'll just eat it to kind of give us some room here. We got some ammo, which is good, though. Oh, man, that's pretty bright, though. Okay, we have a security room. Okay, the security room is still operational, but looks like we cannot unlock the door. We're probably gonna go check out the film or whatnot. The camera's pretty much what happened here. Yeah, of course. It looks like the hazmat guys are the ones that are infected here. Let's just put you down. Let's, let's just reload while we have the chance. Okay, 11 bullets. Ah, we might want to go that way. There's some ammunition there. Oh. I guess I 
guess there's zombies over there. I'm like, where's that noise coming from? Here we have a security guard. Another elevator. I need to get the po that Pollux sample. So we got to come over here and get our sample back. Who's alive? Are you above? Oh, there he is. Okay. Let's see. We kind of want to watch out for this because this might cause a alarm to go off. I would assume. So let's kind of go up here. Let's see if there's anything we can find after we kill this bastard. Oh. While well, I miss. Miss many times. Oh, come on now. Oh, I'm so glad when I get those headshots. Okay, she's waking up. We'll let her get a little bit closer to us here. Wow, these hollow points are doing a number on these guys, though. Okay, there's definitely someone dead in here. Okay, so which one of you is still alive? Oh, oh. Oh, behind the table. Of course, I'd miss. I'll say, get a shot in there. Yeah, hollow, hollow rounds are the way to go. Let's actually take care of that real quick. So let me interact with that, combine it with uh, the hollow points. Never mind, we have to do with the regular ones. So we empty it out. There's some more ammo. Gladly take that. Looks like it's for our assault rifle that we haven't needed to use yet. Okay, so another biogenetic encrypted file. We'll just take it. I'll say that looks like that is all we need here. And let's see who is still alive up here. Okay, it's kind of weird that they have some... A portrait depicting the Greek god Ares. It is said that his beauty is equal only to his lust for violence. It's kind of weird that it like allowed us to see that. Maybe because this guy was going to come over here. I was supposed to save the last one for myself. Shit. Oh, thank God we put him down. Let's see. Slow reload. How's your ammo? 10. A portrait depicting the Greek god Hephaestus. Hephaestus. He lived in a volcano and was the god of blacksmithing. Why do we have Greek gods chilling here? Portrait depicting the Greek god Kronos. He is the father of Zeus who devoured his children for fear that one would usurp his power. Mm hmm. And then we have a portrait depicting the Greek god Apollo. As deity of the sun, he brightened mankind's future with art, poetry, and music. Yeah, they all say that and they do some dirty things that they uh, don't allow you to know about. Biogenetics encrypted file. Another one. I'm assuming that's what we're here for. Portrait depicting the Greek god Pollux. One half of Dioscuri with his twin brother Castor. A skilled boxer he is said to be immortal. Where is that bastard? Must be in the next room. There might be another thing that we need to shoot pretty much. Also let's see what we got in here. Ammo, I will take that. The private office of the founder. From here, I should be able to restore system passwords. Okay, so we are... We need to pretty much use items here, because I want the ammo. So you know what? It's probably a waste, but we're going to use you. We're going to pick up that ammo. Cannot be wasting that. Okay, portrait depicting caster, one half. You know, twin brothers of Pollux, a brilliant horse tamer. Protector of wary sailors. At least we know that guy's dead. Portrait depicting the hero Jason in possession of the Golden Fleece. According to legend, it had the ability to heal any wound. Apparently, we need to lower the light lighting a little bit. I'll say we'll go to six. I'm just kind of cautious because, well, it looks like it's bright either way. I just don't want to get too dark where y'all can't see. 
Oh no, do we need to put like a password in? Okay, cast a light onto the darkness and there shall be no storm from which he cannot save you. And it's probably one of these Greek gods. Castor and Pollux, one of the, po of the possible names, what could be more appropriate than these? Indeed, the revolutionary breakthrough that is Pollux could never have existed without its brethren, Castor. Perhaps the most male-violent chemical weapon ever conceived. As a matter of fact, we knew practically nothing of it before salvage of that Japanese submarine was completed in the 70s, except that it brought about irreversible damage to organisms that would shame even Saren. That being said, this whole program one that will inevitably rewrite the history of BC weapons and elevate the United States even higher on its supreme global pedestal didn't arrive merely by chance. No, not mere chance, but rather divine intervention that the vessel delivering its toxic payload to our predecessors never reached its destination, instead becoming haplessly entangled off the coast of the North Fall Islands in Washington State where it remained unseen and forgotten for years. It may well be a fluke, however, that a particular type of jellyfish native to the island came in contact with itsy-bitsy doses that gradually escaped the rotten hole, instantly transforming, perhaps evolving, and infecting some of the island villagers. But it wasn't until the obscure crisis claimed its first human victim that our government decided to step in and take action. Stumbling upon the terrible truth that is, in fact, the only reason we're here today is due to pure and simple incompetence of the crew. The funny thing about this narrow escape is that a potentially disastrous yet poorly executed revenge plot by some defeated nation overseas has once again turned out to be quite a luck for us. Part 2 1973 was the year when the Aegis laboratories were built on the island designated North Blue 2. In order to safely extract and repurpose the liquid gas we discovered in that Japanese submarine. I still remember the salvage operation and construction works as the company gave me free reign when it came to most of the architectural and design choices. We were able to free part of the hull from its seabed tomb, then later built the concrete bunker that currently houses it. It was one half of an engineering job, but the facility we use today are more than worth the immense effort. The lower levels of the North Blue 2 facility, the most top secret ones, contain the submarine and most vital experiment rooms while other levels contain the observation deck, loading area for shipping of sensitive materials, additional labs, and a storage area. On the other hand, the top levels accessible by ordinary staffers including office space, a conference room, modern server room, and necessary amenities. Most of the people who work here have no idea what lies beneath, and are ignorant to the fact that they're parading around a monument where history is being rewritten every single day. Come to think of it, I doubt anyone truly knows what's going on down here. Castor could possibly be the ultimate weapon for large-scale chemical attacks, yet the dispersal method is surprisingly simple. The CSRO3 gas is compressed at a very high temperature in special reinforced tanks that are loaded into an aircraft. When the aircraft reaches its target, single or multiple castor cylinders are jettisoned. Once they strike the surface, they release mechanisms the release mechanism is triggered and the three shielding pedals open up, leaving the inner cylinder exposed at this point. The CRSO3 is released at a high pressure, which converts the pressurized liquid to a gas, making it extremely volatile. This is where Castor shows its unique colors. The gas then expands rapidly like a mighty flame and feeds on the oxygen in the surrounding area, creating a sort of closed off environment that makes it nearly impossible for any breathing organism to survive. Gradually, it will lose all effectiveness and dematerialize, leaving no trace behind. If a large enough quantity were to be spread to highly populated locations, it could afflict thousands upon thousands of victims within seconds, instantly consuming a population for a military or a group of unpleasant and expendable mercenaries sent out to the scene of a confrontation. So we finally got that. We need to figure out what the password is for this. We're going to stop here today, though. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. In the next one, we're going to go see if we can figure out what the password is for this computer and probably have to read that.